Welcome Aurists, and welcome to another comparison. I'll be diving into the similarities and differences between the Citizen Series 8 GMT reference NB6031-56E and the Rolex GMT Master 2 reference 126710BLNR. These two have obvious similarities, both having the Batman colour scheme and both being GMT watches, but their prices differ greatly and I want to showcase their differences so we can compare what watches in different price categories look like next to each other. Here are the dimensions and specs. The Citizen Series 8 is a slightly larger watch with the biggest difference being its thickness. Although they have the same water resistance rating, the added benefit of a screw down crown on the GMT Master 2 provides more peace of mind and it has an extra 20 hours of power reserve over the Citizen GMT. Now the lug width on the Citizen is a tricky one as it has an integrated bracelet but the outer portion of the first link measures around 22.5 millimeters and the inner section is roughly 11 millimeters. Let's first take a look at the dials. Here we have two black dials with the color being the most similar thing about them. Although they're both black, the execution makes them appear like opposites. The Citizen sports more of a matte finish with an intricate tile-like pattern which boasts alternating flat and ribbed surfaces. The GMT Master 2 has a glossy lacquered finish, nothing more, nothing less. It's incredibly simple, yet incredibly effective, giving the watch a classic and refined look versus the more casual and sporty approach on the Series 8 GMT. The details found on the dial of the Citizen make it a very intriguing watch and adds a whole dimension of depth. The varying heights of its tessellation makes the dial appear deeper than it is and gives its indices and hands a floating appearance, further emphasised by its extremely clear crystal, which doesn't even look like it's there. Personally, I find it much more interesting to look at when compared to the GMT Master 2. It's like the two watches represent a rebellious young star up against a revered veteran who's stubborn in his ways. While the dial on the GMT Master 2 is much simpler, it still remains a sight to behold. Its plain canvas leaves little room for error. It has to be done correctly to look how it looks. One imperfection and it's pretty much game over. There's a certain beauty which comes from a lacquer dial. It's elegant and sophisticated and lets its finish do the heavy lifting. The differences don't stop there. The Citizen Series 8 GMT continues its geometric design into its indices, foregoing the more traditional layout found on the Rolex, incorporating sharp lines and corners which contrast the more circular nature of the GMT Master 2. Just like the dial, the indices on the Citizen have a mix of flat and textured surfaces in the form of polishing and brushing compared to the polished indices of the Batman, which do work well with its glossy black dial. Both timepieces have polished hands, with the handset on the GMT Master 2 being more distinct with its differing shapes, and their respective GMT hands are also coloured differently. On the Citizen, orange is found on the arrow tip, while the Rolex has colour on the stem of the arrow with a polished tip. The orange on the Series 8 is a striking choice, and in turn, stands out more compared to the blue of the Batman. Even though the arrow is smaller, it's still far more noticeable, and its black base makes it look like it's floating across the dial. All hour markers and hands on both of these watches have loom. However, the loom found on the Rolex is miles ahead of the Citizen. We get a green glow on the Series 8 GMT against the blue glow of the GMT Master 2, and the difference in brightness between the two is very noticeable. The Citizen has rather small loom plots and its formula probably isn't the greatest, resulting in poor results. Looking at the bezels, it's pretty clear why these two are being compared in the first place. Both have black and blue bezels, giving them a similar look, but they're actually quite different when we take a closer look. The Citizen GMT uses an insert protected by a crystal, whereas the Rolex uses a bi-ceramic insert and their blues offer differing shades, lighter on the Citizen and darker on the Rolex. The GMT Master 2 makes up for lack of depth on its dial with added depth on its bezel insert. The numerals are engraved into the ceramic, making them very defined. The Citizen, on the other hand, can't do much but have a flatter look due to the crystal, but this doesn't stop it from having crisp white print. 
The markings between the numerals on each bezel also match their respective dials, with rectangular or straight lines for the citizen and circles for the Rolex. Now, GMT bezels have a lot of information on them, which naturally makes them appear a little busy. The GMT Master II has a nice balance of simple dial with busy bezel, whereas the Citizen can appear quite busy with its complicated dial combination. In terms of bezel action, the GMT Master II is slightly easier to use thanks to its numerous teeth providing adequate gripping surface. But the Citizen has a more enjoyable bezel experience. It might be harder to grip, but it has more notches to lock into and has a satisfying click at each point, which is quite hard to find on GMTs. If I were to choose which bezel action to go with, I'd go with Citizen. Just like the dials, the cases continue the themes of each watch. The Citizen Series 8 has so many facets and surface levels that really present a unique case. On the other hand, the GMT Master 2's case in itself is unique, being immediately recognizable as Rolex DNA, while being simple in structure. The Citizen's case, again, takes on a geometric approach to match the dial composition with crisp transitions in its alternating brushing and polishing and the Rolex again relies on its finishing with polished slab sides and brushed top surface. Keep in mind, the Citizen is a far more affordable timepiece in comparison and the finishing here is quite excellent so I don't know if Rolex's finishing is enough to make it stand out. I feel like the case's main draw is not only its conservative design, but its iconic shape, which is something that can't be ignored and something the Series 8 GMT just doesn't have being so young. Both watches have true GMT movements, so if you're used to one, the other will feel familiar. Now there will be obvious differences in the finishing and accuracy tolerances of their movements, but when you turn the watches over, you can actually see the movement in the Citizen. It might not be the most accurate or decorated, but it's nice to see the thing powering your watch. Citizen didn't just stop at having all this added detail in the dial and case. They went a step further and incorporated an integrated bracelet, a feature which really elevates the watch and gives the geometric architecture a flowing look. It matches well with the watch head and it follows the lines of the case for a seamless look. Like the Jubilee on the GMT Master 2, it has brushing and polishing and the finishing on both bracelets match the finishing on their cases. While the Jubilee bracelet on the GMT Master 2 isn't integrated, its clasp is an upgrade from the Citizen. It has an easy link extension with three points of hard to reach micro adjustment and a fold over lock. The clasp on the Citizen Series 8 GMT has buttons to unlatch it. That's it. And that's rather disappointing, considering the level of technicality in the rest of the watch. Both bracelets look fantastic, and while they're visually quite different from one another, they pair perfectly with their respective watch heads. Now, looks are different to comfort, and the Jubilee is definitely more comfortable, which really isn't surprising at all. It wraps around the wrist better and feels more natural during wear, but the dimensions of the watch heads also play a big role in the comfort of the watch. The Rolex feels balanced on the wrist, being slimmer and more proportionate with its bracelet. The Citizen, on the other hand, is top heavy and makes its bracelet look thin in comparison to the thickness of the watch. Its lacking clasp also contributes to this bulbous feeling as it struggles to offset the large watch head.
How does the Citizen Series 8 GMT stack up against the Rolex GMT Master 2? Considering the price differences between the two, especially their secondary market prices, the Citizen presents itself as an absolute beast of a value proposition. If you can get over the weird dimensions, you'll find yourself absorbed in its incredible finishing, detailed dial and fascinating design. Not only is it a bargain compared to the Rolex, in general, the Citizen Series 8 GMT is a value buy among GMTs in its price point. While it draws obvious inspiration from the Rolex Batman, there are so many aspects which make it unique and make it stand out in the GMT space. Let me know what you think about each watch in the comments. Do you prefer the Citizen or do you prefer the Rolex? Do you own one or the other? Share your thoughts and questions and I'll do my very best to reply. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more watch content. I'll see you in the next one.